Star Trek Online, one of my most anticipated games of 2010. Star Trek is without a doubt one of the best sci-fi licenses ever created. But that's not in question here. What is in question is will this game live up to its name? Now I want to share something with you. This game in particular, I have this odd feeling that it is being rushed to store shelves unnecessarily. And that is not a good thing. The Star Trek fans are patient fans, and they are loyal fans, but one thing that they will not tolerate is a half-assed effort. Star Trek DAC is a half-assed top-down arcade shooter that barely has anything to do with Star Trek. So who should buy this one? I don't know, uh, people that like to waste money? I don't like it. So let's take a look at the things that might suck. I have many concerns about this game, but one of them may seem like a small thing, and that is the Starship damage modeling. If space combat is 50% of the game, you're going to be staring at your ship avatar for hours. Your ship is supposed to be an extension of you. You're to care for it, look after it, walk it, feed it. Eventually developing a bond with your ship. So it's imperative that the damage system be as detailed as possible. You know, the scenes of the movies of the ship getting battered. Fire! Hey, cut it out! You're fucking up my paint job! Oh, sorry. I'm talking about sections of the ship breaking away, seeing individual decks damaged, seeing electricity sparking through the bulkheads. Dynamic damage. That would add so much character to your ship and would give you a visual indication of when you need to get your ass to a starbase dock. If our ship is damaged and we're allowed to visit the bridge, we want to see that damage extend to the bridge. Flickering lights, broken control panels, smoke, scorch marks, all that stuff. Damned peculiar. Why are they just sitting there? They are not responding to hailing frequencies. Sir, they're raising their shields. Raise ours! I, I can't! Sir! Brace for impact! Commander, get those shields up! Damage report! You still remember? Admiral, I cannot help but be touched. I, of course, remember you. Damn you! I told you about the paint job! Surely I have made my meaning plain. I mean to avenge myself upon you, Admiral. I've deprived your ship of power, and when I swing around, I mean to deprive you of your life. But I wanted you to know first who it was who had beaten you. God! But will we get all that? No. Instead, I'm pretty sure we won't see any internal damage. And as for external damage, we'll get damage decals placed haphazardly on the hull. Lame. And one of the first things that needs to be addressed, if not in the initial release. Okay, so maybe you don't care about Starship damage modeling. So let's get past some of that small stuff and talk about bigger stuff. Now in my time with Craig, the executive producer for Star Trek Online, I was alright with the grinding in the game. You're playing with five other players as you explore the galaxy together, flying in formation in space, or beaming down as away parties onto the planetary surfaces. You take the red shirt. 
And I'm also all right with the raiding content. Having up to 35, 40 other players in massive space battles is something that I've never taken part in and cannot wait to. But one thing I am concerned about is all this combat orientation. Now the developers have made pretty clear that this is a combat oriented Star Trek game but that doesn't give them a free pass to just ignore the diplomatic and abstract mission types. This is Star Trek after all. I want to see space monsters. Please don't smack me. I have a low pain threshold. I have a rare disease that makes my soft flesh bruise easily. I could easily expire from even a small tap and then who would feed my thousand encrustlings? Space monsters. Better be in the game. Strange encounters, creative thinking. Don't disappoint us. Oh, and space pirates. Space pirates! <laughs> this galaxy is mine! Finally, and this one's a doozy, the Klingons. I can't help but get this feeling that they're getting the shaft. First, this game isn't a dual choice like I had originally thought. You're going to be forced to play as the Federation for a while, and then the Klingon option unlocks. But for some warriors out there, they're not going to be able to get the stench of dirty human DNA off them, ever. Are the Klingons being shafted? They only level up through player vs player. Thematic, sure, but will they have their own story based content? Will they have fewer ships and customization? The Star Trek Online devs neglect the Klingons at their own peril. More talk! <laughs> Especially when a lot of the other races aren't playable. Is Star Trek Online gonna have 1.5 race faction selections at the outset? not very Star Trek. And those are just my three concerns. Since I've never played an MMO, mine are kind of less MMO based. Maybe you have more pressing concerns. And if you have a concern, share it with me. I'd love to read it. Now fair is fair. Since we are trying to determine whether the game sucks or not, let's take a look at the things that should kick ass. After all that, it may seem like I hate Star Trek Online. But this is not true at all. As I said in the beginning, Star Trek Online is one of my most anticipated games of 2010. There are only two other games that I am this excited for. Star Trek Online is looking to offer us a fresh, unique take on the MMO genre. And that's why for our first episode, STO earns a full 10 on the Hype Index meter. I cannot wait to get command of my first starship and go out and explore the galaxy with my friends. So that's it for this episode of the Angry Joe Show. I'll see you guys later and in the servers of Star Trek Online. Scotty, beam me up. Why are they just sitting there? Razors! <laughs> Brace for impact! <laughs> wait, wait, wait. So oh, shit! <laughs>